In the prayers of the church, with God's glory on the wings, like the force of many waters, I can hear it every day. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Amen. Glory on the wings. Sir. I can hear the angels sing. This is the realm of your This is the realm of your praise. All oh, my heart's dear desire is to see your face. So. Oh, Okay, here we go. So we move back. I welcome you all to tonight's meeting. Talking about the second in our series of master classes for the singles, the singles master class 2.0. Um, I count it a privilege to be doing this. I count it a very great privilege. And I want to appreciate every one of you who are here. I'm seeing some married people on the platform. Eh? <laughs> this is supposed to be singles master class. Okay. I'm guessing... They want to 
they want to they want to stand in for singles. I want to believe so. Amen. All right. So um I welcome you all to this very special class. We are going to as much as possible. <laughs> Um, as much as possible, make it powerful, um, going straight to the point in a nutshell, then we'll also give room for questions. I wanted to have a very unique talk this night um, that is talking about like people to just ask questions on anything, then we'll take it from there. But while I was waiting, the Lord just brought something and that struck my spirit, it struck my mind, and it stirred my, it stirred my heart, it stirred my whole being, and I thought it would be a good place to start. You know, the Lord just put me in remembrance. I don't know, I don't know why he had to bring that discussion. He made me to just stay in the, in you know, to just sit, just say sit down. He said leave your room. I was lying on the bed. He said leave there. Go into the toilet. I went to the toilet, said, sit down. So I sat down and it took me back into um, while I was still single. And it brought me, you know, there are things, there are things that, there are certain books that the Lord, certain records that the Lord has, uh, keeps concerning us. And there are times in our life's journey that he brings some of those things to just play them back. And he began to remind me, you know, um in from 1992 backwards that was actually the the the, the book of remembrance that was opened from 1992 backwards when okay let me put it better between 1991 december uh, sorry 1991 august and 1992 uh april where I had made up my mind that, okay, let me go back to how I had made up my mind before I got saved. Um, 1988, 1989, 1990, I had actually made up my mind that, look, this marriage thing is not just for me. Let me just look for, well, before I got saved, the idea was just get it, just get a lady contract her um she had one or two um two two children for me a boy and a girl i pay her off so she doesn't ask she can go and remarry or do anything with her life and all of that then of course i got saved in 1988 and um it shifted somehow i still wasn't so it's okay since i since i didn't have um, I couldn't achieve that. Let me just sacrifice anything that has to do with marriage. So what I just did was to just start loving God, and I I went all out to seek God and all of that. So tonight the Lord took me back to that place and opened that book for me, and He began to show me how that was something that. In the way he put it, he said, that caught my interest. <laughs> he said, that was a sacrifice. That that was um, your heart of worship. And I knew I could walk with you. I knew I could trust you to walk with me. And I knew I could count on you to do the things I have. But I, I also ordained that you be married. And that was why. I took you through the pathway that I took you through, and you got married even before you knew or before you before you could even make any decision on whether you still want to get married or you want to maintain the course of not getting married or not. I had to step up an interest in you because I have seen that you had so much to give. In loving me, I poured myself in you, and I needed you to, to spread it out into the nations. And one of the ways to spreading that out was through the marriage pathway. And that really caught my interest tonight. So the reason I wanted to ask, start with questions and answers was I just want people to ask their questions that you will bear your mind so that your questions will not be based on what I'm going to share. 
So I wanted it to be um, a no holds barred discussion, you know, very interactive. We are seeking to make it very interactive. But um, so still keep your questions. Don't let whatever I'm going to share change your mind. Okay. Yes. During the teaching or during the sharing, during the things, I'm, some of the things I'm going to share, some of your questions will be answered. But there are questions that you have that may not have been answered or that will not be answered during the sharing. Please still feel free to ask those questions. And there are questions that will also pop up even as I begin to share. Please feel free to ask those questions. And also, if you want to, there are people who are even more experienced than I am in this. If, you, if you've been following the series on this marriage discussions and all of that, you will see that there is nothing conventional about it. It is not the usual kind of teachings that you will hear. Like um, I remember the feedbacks I got even from my own daughter when we had the uh, singles master class 1.0, and I asked her, you know, that she didn't want to come for that program because she was just she had she had had it with single seminars marriage seminars, um, uh, single talks, and all of that. She had just had it. So I just asked, okay, just come. If you, when you come and you still feel the same way, then I won't, I will never bother you with anything that has to do with single teaching again. So she came and after that, and I said, so what do you think? And she, she said that I have been going for singles seminars singles fellowships singles teachings and all the single singles is that i have never heard anything like this you know um and it's, it's the things i teach are the things that the lord taught me they, they are not things that i learned in a bible school i think I've, I, most of you may have heard my story the only bible school i would have gone to I went with the intention to learn, but I got there two weeks into my getting to the place. I was made assistant director of studies. So um, I'm not a Bible school graduate. <laughs> or let me put it better, I'm not a, theolo a theological seminary graduate. And the Bible school that I am in is a Bible school of life uh, where you never graduate from. I learn every day. You know, I learn every day and I'm still learning and I will continue to learn even through eternity, we'll continue to learn. That is the Bible school that I am in. I'm still there. And we all should be there. If you are not there yet, we all are there one way or the other. But in case you are not, you should be there. So that's why we don't teach things that are conventional. You, you may not hear the usual how-tos and all of that. You may not hear the usual 10 ways, 10 things you must do to prepare yourself. You may not hear the usual, you know, when they want to force you or make you, they look at your age and they feel because of your, sorry, age, you should marry a cockroach. No, that is not the, that is not the essence. The essence of this masterclass is to open our eyes and to show us, like I gave in the synopsis that, you know, um, have you ever thought of, for the guys, have you ever thought of creating your own bride? <laughs> Those are the kind of things we are going to hear. Um, uh, I like just, I, I love God when he shares these strange things to, to me, all right? You know, um, how about creating your own bride? And you, the lady, how about calling forth your own man? Calling him forth. And we are going to look at scriptures on how these things are going to, how these things are done and all of that. You know, um, don't ever, one of the things I want to say here, um, for those of us who think that we are, in quotes, you, you, you think you are, uh, you are aging. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest mistake that you will make. You know, um, I was telling somebody, I said, um, for me, the reason my face my schoolmates, my primary schoolmates, my secondary schoolmates, they will see me and they will recognize me anywhere because my face do not change. And I'll tell you why. That is because in my heart, I am still a teenager. And I'm, I'm, I, I take that very seriously. I'm not joking. 
I I I reason, I think like a teenager. I see myself in that teenage years because scripture tells me that anyone who dies at a hundred, which is an accidental death because he's not supposed to die, so that person died as a child. So if at a hundred somebody dies as a child, then at the number of 57, I'm just a teenager. In fact, maybe I'm just thinking ahead of my age even. Yeah, because if a hundred dies as a child, that means I'm just a, I'm still a, um, um, an infant or a toddler. So, but I'm just somebody who is thinking ahead of my age. That is why I'm even thinking like a teenager. So I think like a teenager and I act sometimes like a teenager is intentional. I build myself. Actually, most of the time, I don't, I have to, it's when I see here people talking about their age in terms of numbers, 58 and all, I will now, re, I will now record that, okay, oh, you actually carry the mark of 57 in your, in your, in your life and all of that. Or when I'm feeling phones and I, oh, 57. But the truth is, I don't allow age to affect me, and we should not allow age to affect us in any way. So that is the first, the teaching I've started, that is the first thing you need to, to you know, how do I put it? You need to break off your mind that, oh, I'm getting old, nobody is coming. You will just, you will just start that is when the enemy will come and it will, the spirit of age will really take you over and you will start aging in terms of oldness. But when you look at yourself that, look, you are a teenager, you are a, listen to that word, you are the handmaiden of the Lord. When you see yourself as a handmaiden of the Lord, even for those of us who are probably widows or something happened, um, you are separated or, or, or divorced or anything, your husband left you, your wife left you, and you are wondering, oh, um, a handmaiden, what if these people, they are looking for virgins and all of that. Listen, before the eyes of the Lord, you are a virgin. Because so long as you are keeping yourself pure, you never mess yourself up, you never, you, 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 are, you are not indulging in all of these sexual sins and all of that, the Lord sees you as pure as a virgin. So when you understand all of these things, it changes. It it begins to give you a new mindset. It changes the whole. It, it changes the the gist. It changes the, the 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 core discussions and conversations, and it begins to rouse something from your inside. You actually begin to think and reason as that young girl, that young boy, that you you wish you were like some of us we are wishing oh i wish i got married when i was 28 you can actually be 28 mm -hmm. yeah you can be 28 i wish i was married when i was 30 i wish i was, I was married when i was 21 you can be 21 because as a man thinketh in his heart so is he as a man thinketh in his heart I want you guys to meditate on that scripture, eat it until you become that scripture. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, or so is she. <laughs> yeah, because we are sons. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so as you think in your heart, so are you. So if you think you are old, then you are old. But if you think that you are ageless, in other words, because remember that we... Look at that song. Um, he he is he is. What, what do we say? Um, we bow before your throne. We bow before your throne. You are ageless, so changeless, ageless. Which means you don't change, you don't age. Do you know that that's who you are supposed to become? You you were created in that kind in that image. You were created in that likeness. You don't age, you don't change. So if you don't age and you don't change, why would you be worried about the, the fact that, oh, hey, um, I'm getting old, I'm getting fat, I'm getting this. When you think you are fat, then you start blowing up. But when you begin to see yourself, when you stand before the mirror, this, no, you see yourself as slim, it's only a matter of time. Listen, you can still speak a word of God that the word of God will begin to reshape you and remove you. I'm saying something tonight because this is a master class, so I'm giving us key. I will just talk, but listen, make notes and go back to this recording after now and listen to it, meditate on it in, until it forms a life in you. 
It is on that note that we start we kick, we kick start tonight, and I say that even as the word of God comes forth tonight, that every heart will receive it, and it will become life in that heart. It will form flesh, and it will mold you. It will break out, remove every the word of God as it comes today. It will come like a surgeon's scalpel. It will divide between the soul and the spirit. It will cut into the core of your being, and it will begin to remove whatsoever it is that have been a source of doubt, a source of worry in your life in the name of Jesus. Every word that we come today, we come as hammer. It will break every fallow ground and it will reset things. It will reset your mind. It will reset your thoughts. It will remold you. It will recalibrate your system and it will, it will set your heart on fire and begin to plunge you into the pathway of destiny fulfillment in the name of Jesus. The Lord will take you, will take a hold on you, and we use you so greatly and so mightily that he will begin to use you to reshape and to reconfigure even the hearts of the people around you and even the, your own environment to recreate things and so that there will be an emergence of his prowess, of his nature in your life in the name of Jesus. This is the word that I bring. This is the decree that we make. This is the foundation that we lay, and this is what we arrange even this day in Jesus' name. So every heart is set on fire today, even as you hear every spoken word from this altar, from this platform, from this pulpit, from this, from his throne in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yeah, it is on that note that I welcome us all to Singles Masterclass 2.0. 2023. Amen. So we declare this meeting open in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. So these are some of the, if, if you want to call it ground rules, it's okay. So um, as we talk, for those who can speak either on Telegram or um, Zoom, all you need to do is signify, just raise up your hand and you ask questions. And for those on um, all the other platforms, just type your questions or type your comments, you know, on in the com in the comment session, and we'll respond to as many questions as we can take. And if you are on all the other platforms and you desire that, oh, I want to join the Zoom, the Zoom or the Telegram, just signify and we'll post the, we'll send the link on that platform so that you can always join us even as we do so in Jesus name. Oh, sorry, I have not started Mixer R. See, that's when you are. All right. So we are live on all the platforms now. All the platforms we are live now. So I should be able to assess, but um, I will also ask that um, Rhoda will be able to assist me on the YouTube platform and um, okay, Facebook, I have Facebook right in front of me, I have Telegram right in front of me, but the YouTube, I have to go in and out from time to time. All right. So, let's look at um, when we talk about Singles Masterclass, today, I want to, what I want to focus on or what I want to teach or share is how as a because one of the one of the challenges most of us have is that oh um why is it that nobody is coming for me why am i not seeing people is it that i'm not beautiful enough am i not handsome enough why is it that i'm too old is it that is it because i'm fat and all of that do you know that i have a friend i have i have i have a friend right who you will see quite a number of beautiful ladies around him, but he will not even, they don't even move him. But when he sees what you call big, plump, oh my God, you see this guy tripping all over, you know, his, his body will literally be vibrating. So there are, what I'm just trying to bring out is that never think that is because of your size, that is why somebody is not coming for you. There are people who just love you. There is somebody out there who loves you the way you are. And when they see you, my goodness, you will see how they will be tumbling 
jumping and rolling all over. Don't say that because um, because of your number, because of the number of your age, that uh, that's why maybe that's why people are not coming and all of that. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Yes, it's a lie from the pit of hell. It is not the reason. Today, we are going to look at, I'm going to start from there. We're going to see the reason. The only reason why people are not coming is because of you. <laughs> your mindset. So one of the, the first thing you want to do is to shift your mind from the way you have been seeing yourself, the way you have been thinking about yourself, the, 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 the things you have been saying about yourself. You have to shift your mindset from all of those things. That is why we start, we did what we did on Wednesday, talking about offloading mindsets. If you have not listened to that teaching, please go and listen to it. As a matter of fact, I was with an elder today and he was still telling me, he said, Glenn, that teaching was just something else. Thank God. He said to me, he said, thank God you did not limit it to just marriage. Even though it was marriage, masterclass, but the way you put it, you use the word relationships. Say, he said he had to go and share with another elder. Say, ah, he said, he had to tell the other, he said, Clem brought another layer of let this mind be in you that, that, was, that, is also, that was also in Christ. So you see, things like that, when there is a mind shift, when you offload your mindset, it recalibrates, it changes, it begins to affect your very physique. It, 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 it begins to reshape and remold not just your thinking pattern, even your beauty. Listen, offloading mindset is the background, is the bane of ornaments being added to you. Because when you offload mindset, it's like when Queen, when Esther was being prepared to be presented before the, the queen, I mean the king, the, the, when the eunuch chose the kind of fragrant oil, oils that she would use while others were picking their own. You see? You see, mindsets, she did not pick her own. She allowed the eunuch, who is um, a typology of the Holy Spirit, to pick for her, to select the oils for her. And as that was done, you see that by the time the oil began to massage, they began to massage the oil into her, you see that there was a difference. Her skin began to radiate, and which means there was a shift, a mind shift. There was something that was shifted from her. She did not look at herself. Oh, I'm beautiful. I have to choose my own. No, 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 no. What she did was that she allowed the Holy Spirit to direct and to give her and to pick because the Holy Spirit is the one and is the one who knows the mind of the Father. So the first thing you want to do is to shift your mind from the way you have been thinking about yourself. Because whatever thought you have about yourself is lower than the thought that God has towards you. Did you hear that? Anyhow you think, you want to think, oh, and this, and this, nobody, no matter what, the way the, the way God sees you is far better than the way you see yourself. So the first thing you want to do is to shift your, to have a mind shift from the way, from where you have been and the way, what you have been seeing, what you have been hearing, what you have been saying about yourself. Shift from that place into the way God sees you the things God hears about you and the things God says about you. When you do that, oh my goodness, your esteem would have been raised up. Your, your esteem would have been blown up to the power of, <laughs> you know, to, to such a number of rich power 10. In fact, 100, 1,000. What it means that there will be nobody that can scale you anymore because you, you are you are you are blown out of this world. So, rule number one: have a mind shift. Stop thinking less of yourself than what God thinks about you. So, to do that, how do you do that? What it means that. You have to enter into God. You have to love God. You have to seek God. You have to understand. You have to wait to know what is God saying about me. When people tell you things, don't answer them based on what you heard them say to you because they just the enemy may just be using them to test, to know 
whether you know what they know, what the heavens know about you. As a matter of fact, most of the times that people will say things about you, the way they will say things about you is because they have heard what had been said concerning you in the heavenly realms, in the spirit realm. So they come to say contrary things to test whether you know what had been said about you. So it's very important that you dwell. I'm emphasizing this because this is the bane, is the foundation of every other thing that we're going to discuss tonight. This is where the conversation begins. You know, the, the most beautiful of us, when I see most of you, all the ladies that are around me, when I see, I don't see what people see. I see what God sees. And what God sees is so beautiful. It's so amazing. You know, one of the things I've had, what, there was a day I said, Lord, thank you for getting me married when I got married. <laughs> because it would have been so confusing. Honestly. Because all the people I see around me, there is, I see beauty. As a matter of fact, if I were to sit with any, if I'm to sit with any, any one of you, by the time I describe what I see and I know about you, you will, if you don't know those things, because most of you don't even know them, you will think I'm flattering and I don't flatter. Oh, I don't flatter. I tell you the way it is. So if I were to sit to describe and to describe you and to tell you the things I see and know of you, you will be worried. I thought this guy is a pastor. <laughs> Why is he flattering me? But I don't, I'm not flattering you. That's because I see what God sees. I see through the eyes of the Lord. I see into your heart and I see what God has put there. God does, God will not see you to tell you false. God does not find fault in anybody. He sees what he has put in you. That is why when he's giving you instructions, when he's asking you to do things, he makes you do things based on what he has put in you and based on what he sees in you. That is why he calls you up to that. So you see, you look at the life of Jesus, for example, when he came, you see that he was not fighting, doing Gidigbo with Satan. He was just overrunning them. What was he doing? He was showing, oh, this is who we are. This is who we are. We are supposed to be overrunning them. That's why I say, if you believe, anyone, if you believe in my name, you will cast out devils. You will raise dead. You will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. That is who we are. You don't struggle to do them. It's your, it's your nature. It's in your, that is your, that is the, that is your DNA interpretations. That is your DNA description. It is just your nature. It is in you to live the way, to live that way. I hope I'm making sense. Amen. So, one, to encourage me, just say, I, I want responses in, in the comment sessions. I want to be sure that people are getting what I'm saying. I want to be sure that what I'm saying is making sense to somebody. Okay? So give me give a thumbs up, um, write a comment and all of that. I just want to be sure that we are understanding what we are saying so that if we are not understanding, I can change it and come lower. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Tolu. It, 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 because sometimes it's of no use saying, putting all of those into the public domain and people don't get it. Because what people are expecting is, they're expecting me to come to give them the 10 steps on how to get, I can give you all of those tenses, but it will not make any meaning to you. I tell you, you have received so many, up to 25 steps, you have received 50 steps. What have you done with them? How have they helped you? That is why I talk, that's why I speak the way I speak, because I want something that will change, that will shift you from where you have been to place you and position you on that platform, in that spot, on that spot where that person that God has been had been preparing you for and is, be, is preparing for you, we look, you both of you, we connect in the spirit and locate one another. And all of these things happen. The platform is your mindset. Your mindset. You know, um, because of that mindset, you'll find that most of the time, what you don't know is this. Your mindset is so powerful that 
God can bring somebody who is such a loving, wonderful person, a gift to you, your mindset will look at that person, you will interpret something else. You will not understand the scroll. I remember telling um, one of my, you know, my, my, my exes, you know, um, I just discovered, I was praying for her one day and the Lord told me, go tell her to start looking for you in people. It was strange. So I, I drove to her house and I said, come, so what's going on? She said, nobody's coming. She said, people are coming, but um, she, uh, you know, I understand. She couldn't tell me what it was. And I said, anyway, I was praying for you last night and the Lord told me to come tell you to stop looking for me in guys. So she was shocked and tears are coming down. So I said, no, it's not, I'm not saying this because I said, let me, let me, let me, let me break it down for you. I said, God brought me into your life to show me, to show you the, where he is taking you to. For the fact that you met me, I can assure you that your husband, I said, God will not open them up again. It's going to be a, they are going to manifest as closed scrolls. Please, this word that I'm, what I'm sharing now may just be for somebody. They are going to, it's going to, Whoever is coming will manifest as a closed scroll. What that means is that is not you are not going to see what you saw in me, in that person. But guess what? God has clothed or locked within that person what, as said, for the fact that you've met me, the person you are going to meet, your husband is going to be seven times. God is going to lock within that person seven times of what you had in me, but it's going to manifest as a close scroll. In other words, the person, you won't see those manifest, those expressions immediately. I learned that in my wife. I learned that in my wife. When the Lord began to tell me 10 things that my wife will manifest, five years into our marriage, I had not seen one. <laughs> it was close scroll. Why? Because it's, you see, those things were not just going to happen. It was going to happen in as I get broken, then those things will manifest. Why? Because if they were to manifest in my unbrokenness, I would destroy them. I will adulterate them. So they, to the extent they will manifest is dependent on my unbrokenness. So the Lord had to take me through the school his threshing floor to take me through the breaking and the crushing process. So I told her, and I prayed with her. She eventually got married. And for the person I knew, if that word had not come, she probably would, not, would have not gotten married to the person she got married to. Please, just a moment, just a moment. I want to check something.
Sorry about that. Yeah. So um, like I was saying, so that that's where we need to start from. Mind your mind. You, there have to be a mind shift from the way you see yourself, the things you think about yourself, because every thought you project in the spirit is creating something. Is creating. Is creating a reality in your life. So you do not want to dwell on certain aspects of the thoughts that you've been dwelling on. So change the way you think. Change the things you say about yourself. Change the things you say about... Um, because every word you speak has a power of creation. That's what we do not know. We create our environment. It manifests in every aspect of our lives, you know. We create the kind of nation that we, whatever you see happening in our nation today, we created it as children of God, as sons, we created it. If you, if you see corruption, we created it. If you, whatsoever, if you are seeing death, we created it. So in the, now, if we can do that in the nation, drive it home. Whatever you see going on around you, going on in your life, you created it. So, he said, the power of life and death lies in the tongue, and many there be that eats the fruits thereof. The power of life and death lies in the tongue, and many there be that eats the fruits thereof. Now, what that means is that the kind of fruits you eat is dependent on what you created with your tongue. So, you can create death, and you can create life. So, why not we stop creating death? Let's create life instead. Do you see? That's what that scripture means. So choose, to, um, there's another place where Joshua was saying, uh, was it Joshua Moses? He was saying, I lay before you um, a curse and a blessing, life and death. And I say, choose life that you may live. So he, he even told them what to choose. But Jesus now came. He said, listen, the power of life and death lies in the tongue. And there are many who eat the fruit thereof. Listen to this very well. Many eat the fruit thereof, which means there are some who have come to know the power of the life in the tongue, and they use that. They actually eat that life. They eat the fruit of life that is lying in the tongue. But there are some who did not know that the power of death lies in the tongue. So everything they say is death, 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 death. So what happens? They are eating the fruit of that death. That is why you see that everything, you will look at things around you, you just see that they are dying. They are dying. Not a symptom. Anything you put your hand upon to do, it's as if it just dies. Things are shutting down. Things are drying up and all of that. Can you change your mind? Can you have a mind shift? When you have a mind shift, you will be amazed how life will begin to, you, life will start finding expression in everything that you do. All right. I think that's, I hope we got that. So I wanted to lay that very strong foundation before so that before we advance into the other things. So now that I believe we have that understanding and we have that agreement, we can now move forward. All right. Now, I want to just jump straight into the stream on what I know most of us are very expectant of, you know, for the guys. Oh, dear. Just just a moment, please. Okay, sorry. Now. So I, I want to jump straight into the stream. Then after that, I promise it's going to be a very short one. After that, I will allow for questions. 
what I'm going to share, we actually share questions. People will ask questions, but it's going to be very, it's also very exciting. You know, um, I already gave like um, a note of this teaching in the synopsis of, you know, um, the briefing of um, what was posted with the flyer. So if I were you, I'll go and cut out that thing. Don't let it slide. Just go and cut it out and paste it somewhere. Then be meditating on it because it's a very powerful um, key that was given there. Even though it was just a brief, I asked in the form of a, I asked them in form of questions, but there are things that should step should step up your mind. All right, should step up thoughts in your heart. So, have you ever thought as a guy? That you can create your own wife. <laughs> so the first I want to ask is it scriptural to say that? Let's 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 do a little bit of discussion here. Is it scriptural to say that you can create your own wife? Guys, talk to me. If um, I can see people's names, so so I, I will call names. Hmm. I'm seeing a lot of I'm seeing quite a number of married people on this platform today. Which one are they finding? <laughs> All right. Too. Yes, 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 yes. Do you know you can create your own wife? Chidos here. Talk to me. Um Desmond, talk to me. Talk to me. Um, good evening, sir. Good evening, bless you. Bless you. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. I think it's scriptural. Yeah. In a vague In a way. Vague way. <laughs> why, why the vague? Uh, what's coming to mind is that anything the verse that says is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we dare to ask or imagine. So, I guess if we can imagine it or desire it, he can do more than that. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other person you have any contrary answer or additional? Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, my own, mm, what I think is about creating your own husband is that I think you you create with your mind so and well for me I have the mind of Christ so if I'm thinking of creating something with my mind actually I'm tapping from or tapping into the mind of Christ so it's something that has already been created in the mind of Christ and by tapping into it I'm just facilitating it's manifesting as a physical and tangible reality in my own um, sphere. So that's what I think, sir. Okay. All right. Great answer. In fact, very good answer, I must say. Yes, Esther, go ahead. Um, I think I see from this uh, retrospect where God created and Jesus also said while he was on earth, anything I see my father do, that also... That's tell that that possibility is there. So without going into detail, that's where that's the realm I would say yes to. It's possible. All right. Thank you. God bless you. Now, let me show you. Is 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 you all have spoken well, but let's you know, I said is this scriptural? Thank God um, Esther quoted the scripture. But let's look at Genesis chapter one from verse 26. Let me show you that you can create. <laughs> Please reach them, man. Reach them. <laughs> so if you have Genesis 21, Genesis, if you're in Genesis chapter 1, help me read from verse 26 to 28. Then somebody also go to Genesis chapter 2, we are going to read from verse 5. 
I think, to eight also. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Yes. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the herds, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the heads and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky and every creature that crawls on the earth. God also said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth and every tree whose fruit contains seed. This food will be for you, for all the wildlife of the earth, for every bird of the sky, and for every creature that crawls on the earth, everything having the breath of life in it. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. Evening came, Amen. and then morning, the sixth day. Praise God. Amen. Now, did you see that? <laughs> Yes, who is reading Genesis 2? What verse, sir? Um, from verse 5. Okay, sir. No shrub of the field had, had yet grown on the land, and no plant of the field had, had yet sprouted, for the Lord God had not made it rain on the land. And there was no man to work the ground. But water would come out of the ground and water the entire surface of the land. Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. And the man became a living being. The Lord now, God. Let, let's stop there for a while. We'll continue. We'll continue. But I want to I want to tie that um verse. Where he said God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into the nostril of man, and man became a living soul. Now, you will see in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26, it says, Let us make man, let's count it in our own image, after our likeness. In other words, let us make our kind. Hmm. Let us make our kind so that everything, let, look, listen, listen to this, so that everything we are in the heaven, they will be on the earth. I'll take that again. So that everything we are in the heaven, so that they will be on the earth. In other words, they will be, the, uh, they will be our expression on the earth. They will be the door, they will be the link through which men will understand and we come, all of creation will come to know, to understand who we are. All of creation. So, in I said, we will create man in our image after our likeness. So, that, what it means that anything we can do, they can do. As we create, they can create. <laughs> the decrees that we make, they will become the living expression of those decrees. Let us make man in our in own image, our own image, after our own likeness. What it means is that man was going to be man by design was going to be such a great revelation, a marvel, a masterpiece. That he was going to be everything that God is. Now, he said, out of the ground, God formed man and he breathed into him and man became a living being. Okay, to do read on from that verse 2. I mean, that um, chapter 2. Read on. From where you stopped. Okay, sir. The Lord God planted a garden in the in Eden in the east, 
and there he placed the man he had formed. The Lord God caused to grow out of the ground every tree pleasing in appearance and good for food, including the tree of life in the middle of the garden, as well as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river went out from Eden to water the garden. From there it divided and became the source of four rivers. The name of the first is Pishon, which flows through the entire land of Avila, where there is gold. Gold from that land is pure. Delium and Hoynes are also there. The name of the second river is Gion, which flows through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris, which runs east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper as his compliments. So the Lord God formed out of the ground every wild animal and every bird of the sky and brought each to the man to see what he would call it. And whatever the man called the living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock, to the birds of the sky, and to every wild animal. But for the man, no helper was found as, as his complement. So the Lord God caused the deep sleep to come over the man, and he slept. God took one of his ribs and closed the flesh at that place. Then the Lord God made the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Did you see that? Listen to this. This man was walking. He was naming. He was he conducted the greatest naming ceremony, but he found that a name was still within him. And there was no one that he couldn't you see. Names are destinies, names are shapers, names are form uh, formers, name. When you mention a name, it creates, it forms, it shapes, it builds, it, it, uh, it releases a fragrance. And as one who was operating in the realms of God, he knew and he understood, he could interpret the different smells. With every name came a smell. With every name came a fragrance. Oh my goodness. With every name came a sweetness. With every name came a description. And there was a destiny that was tied with every name. He understood the destiny. It was actually from their destiny that he interpreted the name and locked them inside a scroll called Lion. He locked a particular he locked a particular destiny inside the scroll and he gave that scroll a title, Lion. He gave another scroll a title, Gorilla. He gave another scroll a title, um, Eagle. He gave another school a title Goat. He gave another school a title. Those were titles. Are you following me? Now, but there was another description. There was another description that was inside of him. And he looked in creation. There was nothing that fitted it. Meanwhile, I won't get into that now. We talked about it a little in 1.0, but today we are going to break, we are going to tear it out. So when I begin to talk about the woman, I will come back to this. But you see, there was this name that was, the name was in him and the response to that name was also in him. So there was confusion. So the Lord now, when he came and he had that discussion with the father, we, we, you, you can read sex bond, you will see it there. He had that discussion with the father and the father said, don't worry, I know what is going on. And the father was, had to take him through a school. Is somebody hearing me? Had to take him through a school of creation. Had to teach him. Say, listen, when I created you, when I said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, I laid myself down. What? <laughs> when God created out of the dust, when he created a body, when he created an image that will contain the soul, God was doing something. 
which was what Jesus came to fulfill. You see, that which had been done outside of time, that was the first time it was brought into time. <laughs> so when he created that vessel, that image, that he was going to transfer himself into, you see, that was a state of deadness. So when he breathed into him, it was like he called that thing that he created that was lifeless. He called it back. He called it into life so that man became a living soul. Now, listen to this. When it was time to bring out that scroll that was still sounding, which he had the name, but there was no scroll that fitted it. When it was time to bring it, he needed to take Adam through a school. That school is called the school of eternal creation. And that is the school I want to introduce all the guys to. This is for guys. Women, don't go and create. You guys, you bath in rest. Men, you create. But I want to show you how to create, which was what Jesus taught us. I mean, yeah, the Father taught us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they taught us that. So when the Father came and he said, okay, I want to teach you something. He said, but the way to learn it, the access point is a deep sleep. The point to go into that class is a is sleep. The point to go into that class is the point of rest. The point to go into that class is the point where you cease from your own labors, where you cease from your own struggles, where you cease from your own searches. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Guys, are you hearing this? So to create your spouse, the greatest error you will make will be to alive and try to create your spouse. You will create a monster. That is why you see that people who have searched looking for physical beauty, looking for either they are looking for physical beauty or they are looking for a woman who is made or they are looking for a woman they can control. Note that a woman they can control. They got into serious troubles, you know. So the first thing you do in the in the in the class in the hall of creation in the school of creation, in the universe of, of creation, is that you enter into the gateway, the pathway to entering that school is the gateway of sleep, the sleep gate. So I'm going to dwell there a little. So that sleep gate is equivalent to you dying to everything that makes me me. So how do you do this? I want to show you a few things. And I will open some scriptures. Psalm, 2 Samuel 23, 15 to 17 is the story of when um, David desired to drink of the well of Bethlehem by the gate. It was specific. And you wonder, what is it about that particular well? I can go into the, I'm not talking about that mystery today. But I say, I desire to, oh, that somebody will just give me of this water, the well of Babylon, by the gates to drink. And three of his mighty men, when they heard it, for the fact that the king desired it, they broke into the camp. But listen to this. When they brought the water, you would have thought that David that was thirsting for it, that was longing for it, would drink it. What did he do? He poured it out on the master. He poured it out on God. It became an instrument of worship because people laid down their lives for that particular thing. Now, guys, this is it. The power, your power to create your spouse lies in this very, this that sounds simple, but is a very strong and deep secret. It's a revelation that if you get it, I will be conducting wedding by January. 
if not December. Yeah. You will see that a set marriage is not in your scroll. You will find that you will be seeing that person. There are some of you whom the Lord have shown a particular sister, but you danced around the sister and you said to Fiakwa because you saw certain things. But God, you know that God showed you that sister. You know. So why did God show you that sister? The reason God showed you the sister is because he wants you to die in order to create that sister and to mold that sister so your creation is not to be created in your image, but in the image of him that you are created. I'll take that again. The creation you are creating, you are not creating that person in your own image, but you are creating the person in the image of the one in whose image you are created. Simple terms. Paul was saying, be ye followers of me as I'm a follower of Christ. The reason I can tell you to follow me is because I know that I am following Christ because I waited until Christ was formed in me. When it pleased the father who formed me in my mother's womb to reveal his son in me so that I can reveal him, I can teach him, I can preach him unto the nations, unto the Gentile nations. <laughs> so you see, the challenge we have, the reason is looking as if, look, I have prayed, I have searched, I'm not seeing. And yet you are surrounded with so many beautiful sisters, but you can't see anyone. It's simply because you are too alive to see. The gateway to create, to entering into this school of creation is the gateway of death or what you call sleep because they have the same root word. Now, we will not be using death because of the negative connotation. So we'll be using the word sleep or deep slumber. That is the gateway into entering that particular class. When you enter into that class, the Lord will now teach you. He said, you see, this is how you bring out this thing. So he caused him to sleep and he opened the side and he took out a rib and he created the woman. What was God doing? God was teaching Adam. He was teaching every man how to create their wives. God will not come now to create that woman because he has finished creation. You are the one that is continuing creation. Woo! My God, you are the one that is continuing creation. Is somebody getting something tonight? Guys, are you hearing this? So you see that... You have interviewed girls. You have dated girls. You have gone out with them. You are not seen. You are not. You've not seen anyone. Mm. It's because you are still awake. Can you go to sleep, please? Get into the state of deep slumber, so that they will teach you in that place, in the place of rest. How do you do that? I just showed you. I just gave you the key. The key is Second Samuel twenty-three. Verse 15 to 17. That is the key to understanding that, to entering. When you have entered into this Second Samuel 23, 15 to 17, you know that you have entered the class fully and you have entered into that state of rest. So what does it mean? What does this particular thing mean? When David poured out that particular water onto the Lord, what is the significance? What? How does it relate with you and the power to create? Let's open it up. That is worship. What it means is that even though he so desired it, by the time they brought it, he said, only God is worthy of this sacrifice. Because those people, they lay down their lives Jesus was saying, say, greater love had no man that, a man that a man should lay down his life for his friend. Do you know what it means? What it means is that greater love had no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for God. Because that man, you see, 
that you think you are sacrificing for, you are not sacrificing for that man. That sacrifice is unto God. So when those three soldiers broke through the camp of the enemy, laying down their own lives, they were actually laying down their lives for God. And David did not consume that sacrifice. He lifted it up to the one to whom only this is worthy of the sacrifice of those men. So I want to ask you a question. Your life, is your life releasing a fragrance that is worthy of God? Young man, elderly man, you that is saying, ah, I have tried. I've even tried proposing, but they don't see. Could it be that your life is not releasing the right fragrance? Because the power of creation lies in the fragrance that you are releasing in the spirit. Your power to create lies in your ability to release the sweet fragrance unto God in your place of sacrifice. If you are not doing that, then you can't create your spouse. You will be creating a monster. That is why you see that you keep run, you, you keep seeing, you keep seeing monsters. Why? Because you are also manifesting as a monster because you have not yet learned to sacrifice. Permit me, I'm using very strong words tonight, but I want you to sink. You are still finding fault in everybody. Why? Because you've not yet gone to sleep. Because it's in your sleep that you have the ability to change and to transform those people and to create them and mold them into the image that reflects the true image of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Guys, are you getting something? I need to be sure that Eh? If you, you are free to raise your hand and to ask questions at any time, please. You are free. If you are on other platforms, you can send in your questions. Even as I'm saying it now, let me check and be sure that there are no questions on YouTube. Okay, no questions. Thank God. So I want to believe that we are all getting it. If you are not, if you are not asking questions, I want to believe that we are all getting what we are saying tonight. Because this is a master class. It's not the regular kind of teaching. That is why we are going this way. That's why we are taking this direction. It is very intentional. So that, it, it, it like I said, the, every word that we come tonight will be like a surgeon's scalpel. It has to cut into the core of our being to bring out the depth of life. Okay, I should be... I should be switching to the women now, but let me round up with this for the men, for the guys that listen carefully. Um, all of those dates, the one they will tell you to date and all of that. Hmm, I don't know about that, but I discovered that you can create your own wife when you enter into the place of rest. How do you get into the place of rest? when you begin to love the Lord and you begin to pour out on him, that strong desire that you have, that you begin to turn it over to God in worship, in sacrifice, <laughs> in loving, and all of that, you will be amazed that your life begins to release a fragrance that starts reshaping that person you saw the person, but there was something. Your life begins to reshape. The fragrance, the essence that you build in your closet begins to reshape that person. Amen. All right. So can we talk about, are we good, guys? Are we good? Can we talk about the women now? Huh? Give me answers, please. Can we talk about the women now? All right. Okay. Thank you. So I want to believe Frankie F is a guy and he's saying we can talk about the women. All right. Now, women. 
So how do you comfort your man? So I'm just going to build on what we did in um, uh, Singles Masterclass 1.0. I'm going to build on that. You can pick up sex bond. You will see some of the things we said there. You know, how the woman can actually, how, how Eve reached out to shake up at Adam until he called, until he cried out to God. Now, I have, I started with the man intentionally, but I want you to know, women, there are times that the Lord would have shown you somebody. Mm -hmm. It's possible. God can actually show you your husband because of your relationship with the Lord. You did not ask for it, but he brought him anyway. So what do you do? You can't go and propose. So what do you do? When that happens, that's one of the questions. But what if God did not show you anything? And you see guys dancing all around you, but nobody is opening their mouth. Some guys specialize in coming to sample your meal. You cook for them. Anytime they are hungry, they come, they play around you. You cook for them and all of that. <laughs> like I said, during the single 1.0, when they come first time, cook for them, entertain them. Second time, cook. The next time, buy, buy cabin biscuit for them. And the third time, I mean, after that, and they come, ah, sis, do you have anything in the house? I have water. No, no, not water. I drank water before I came. Don't, nothing to eat. Oh, there's one, there one buka on the street. Ah, didn't you cook? I'm not your wife. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying don't try to use food to entice them it won't work but I'm going to show you after the first second the third time give them paku give them that uh, you know paku and uh, give them paku biscuit to eat so uh, is this all you have oh you didn't go to the market today give them the paku to eat then you serve yourself a sumptuous meal and be eaten in their presence it's a command I'm giving to everybody on the platform now. Okay? First time, entertain them well. Second time, reduce it small. But still give them food. But the third time, give them paco. Then you serve yourself the sun. Ha! Sis, what happened now? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I, I can't remember you giving me money to cook for you. <laughs> Don't hide it. Be raw. Be plain. Be sincere. That's, what, that's why you're a believer. Okay? They will quote scripture. Uh, uh, have you not heard that uh, he that gives a prophet a cup of water receives? Uh, you are not. You are not my prophet today. <laughs> Don't worry. When the prophet comes, we'll recognize them and we'll serve them well. Then when they come after that, maybe they will. Some maybe you maybe you were not. You, you didn't even eat. They didn't get the message. They ate the paco and they went. Then they came another time again. This time just with them then you know some of them because they know you have become friends come on is there nothing in this house to eat bros there's one bucateria on the streets you can go and help yourself there i'll be waiting for you or you can even go and buy for both of us <laughs> is anything wrong with you taking me out uh -huh. so that way they will leave you alone I'm going to search for the next one. But I want to show you something tonight. You remember when Eliezer was sent to go and search for a wife for, for Isaac? And he prayed a prayer. He said, any woman, Lord, as I go, go with me on this journey. And the woman that you have chosen for your servant, for your son. Say, so let it be, it is that woman that will water me, give me water to drink, and also water my flock, the camels, which is like his ministry or the instrument for his work, ministry. Listen carefully. Ladies, the mystery of that is this. When a woman waters the flock, waters a man and his ministry, 
what you have done is that you have created an opening in the realms of the spirit. You have shown that this is the one that you have called your own and you have taken him over. But how do you do that? How do you water when the man have not come? How do you then water this thing? This is where also the gateway into entering this is you pouring out on God constantly. You know, I have said it before in passing, but today I want to give a full teaching on it. So women, open your ears wide and be very attentive to what I'm going to share with you. Because like I said, I intend joining 15 people, 15 couples next year, 15 at least, okay? Mm -hmm. And tonight I pray that that unction will be released on this platform, that that grace will rest on those 15 people across all platforms today, so that beginning from December, we'll start joining people. Um, by this by this time next year, we'll have completed the 15. That would be our own marriage calendar. We'll have completed the 15. Then all the ones that will come after that will be extras. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody getting me tonight. Okay. So, does it mean I must give these people water physically? Now, the place to watering. Do you know that every time you love out on God, every time you pour out on God, you are pouring out on a particular person in the realms of the spirits? Every time you hang out with God, I think I can share this now. You know, there was a time a guy was coming, dating my daughter, dating my daughter, dating my daughter. That's not that the date wasn't even very strong. It was, let me use the word, Pasha. <laughs> day to day then we'll see it will travel come back you know i mean i told her i said you know what you don't don't suffer don't punish yourself in this shut it down don't i said don't even pray for marriage again in fact i had to start telling i said anybody i told her this listen to this i said anybody that disturbs you with marriage report the person to me I say, no marriage talks. Don't even think about marriage again. I say, you know what? That love that you have, pour it out on God. Just love the Lord. Go all out. I told her, say, don't even pray about marriage. And the same counsel I'm giving to everybody today, all ladies, don't pray about marriage. Y'all, see, this is what you should do. Just love the Lord. That love that you have inside you, that you want to pour out on that man, that's so much love, pour it out on God. Those, that love letter, that test message that you want to be sending, start sending it to God. How many of you know how to send love letters and love messages and WhatsApps? How many of you, you know, I don't know, thank God for WhatsApp, you know that I can send myself messages. Eh? So what I did, listen to this, I want to open your eyes to something. What I did was I tagged it dad. That's Abba. All right? I tagged it Abba. So what I do, I send the way I feel, I send it out to God. So when you look at that particular page, in fact, when you read those messages, it will turn and twist your head. Some of you here, you know, God had blessed me with the power of words when it comes to pouring out such messages. 
Sometimes there are times I want to pray for people. There are times I want to send them better messages. I'm careful what I say so that they don't start thinking otherwise. So I pray very well before I send messages to them. That is why what I started doing now is to pray, to do voice notes. Because when I write, I know there's an unction. I write under unctions. So when I write, it carries a fragrance. It carries a presence. It carries, um, it carries such life that even while you are reading the atmosphere, you can literally connect with the atmosphere that that word, that write-up creates. You can literally touch something in the air. Why am I sharing what I'm sharing? That love that you want to pour out on that man, that, that, this is why I told him, I said, that love you, say, start pouring it out on God. Write the love letters to God. Right? Say the sweet things to God. Stand by the mirror and begin to pour out on the person on the mirror. By so doing, you are reshaping, you are recreating, you are activating something in the spirit. And you see, that thing you are creating, God will carry it onto the one that he has created that is worthy because what you are releasing is water in the spirit. You are releasing water. That water begins to water the soul of that man and begins to water the ministry of that man. You just find that. And by the time you connect with the man, because it's what you have been doing, whatsoever it is that was shut down around the man, everything begins. You find that. That is why, that's why you find that when you connect with such a person, that's why the Bible says that he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. We have so bastardized that particular scripture. We have run it out of context. We did not know. How that happens is because this woman, this handmaiden, had actually been in the realms of God, pouring out on God, loving out on God, you know, building something in the spirit and watering the ministry of that man, watering the life of that man, even though the man did not know. But at the same time, the man also loving out on God, pouring out on God, was creating this kind of woman. So by the time they meet, the favor, the fragrance of life that this woman had built over the years and have generated activates and uh, activates the creation that that man has been creating and what happens is that everything that was locked down that the man had been praying for they just start springing up like that just like that like that like that somebody miss a good place to shout hallelujah that is who you are oh dear handmaiden of god and it does not matter at what level whether you have been married before whether you are a widow you are a widower whether you are whether 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 you are you are separated, whether you are divorced, whether you were, you were broken, hand, you were, your heart was broken before. God is, God specializes in mending hearts. He will teach you to love again. You were jilted or jolted or whatsoever dead, whatsoever level, and also you were cheated on, you were you were bastardized, you were broken in from the inside out, your heart was breaking, broken into a thousand pieces. God is in the house today. He specializes in mending hearts. Or maybe you've been experiencing delays. Could the delay just be that God has been wanting you to just pour out on him, love out on him? And as you begin to do that, you see that something will begin to activate in the spirit. Now, listen to this. One way, um, we already know that scripture in Hebrews. <laughs> we think it's just for warfare. It's for warfare, but don't you know that even marriage is also warfare? Do you know how many things that man is going through? Do you know how many ladies? Do you know that even sometimes sorcery enters into the situation? I want to show you something right now, quickly, even as we begin to, oh, okay, we still have 30 minutes to go, but I want to also give time for, give, give room for questions. So I will end in the next 10 minutes by God's grace. But I want to end with this. I want to open something up right now. Listen to this. Hmm. I, 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 I'm feeling the presence in the room right now. It's like the angel, the angel of love is in the house. Eh? The angel of love is in the house. I actually know his name. He's, he's here right now. 
and this is the angel responsible for marriages, is in the house. What it means that some of you, your if as I speak now, your hearts will be burning, and you will find that some of you will be seeing pictures, some of you will be connected from any part of the world that you are. You just find that you'll be seeing connections, you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing pictures. Some of you will be connecting with one another in different places and at different levels because the angel of love is in the house. The one responsible for marriage connections is here. You see, every time this happens, the, the Lord is just using it to confirm that he ordained this meeting. The, the, the time is 11.31 and we are 31 on the platform right now. Very significant. Eh? 31.31. 31. That is the angel of the fulfillment of his word. Just like the number 113. Huh? <laughs> oh my goodness. When things like this happen, I just the Lord just makes me to take note of them. Hallelujah. So listen. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. Hallelujah. So you have the power as a lady, like it was with Eve inside. With the human inside of Adam, he never gave Adam rest. He began to send signal bites. Signal bites. So that she started sending signal bites. So troubled this man that this man knew loneliness. That it reported on his face that even God, God's presence was no longer enough. You woman, you can so love out on God that this man... He is loving out on God, but you will find that even God's presence is no longer enough. He's now looking for somebody because he knows that there is a name and the name is now beginning to reach out. How is the name reaching out? The name is reaching out because this woman is so loving, so loving God that God, the spirit of God is now moving. Just like the angel of God is present on the platform now, operating under the spirit of God begins to inject and begin to dazzle rings and begin to dazzle pictures. The man will sleep. Is this face he sees? The, you will, the man will be walking. Is the perfume of this girl he sees? And he has not met this girl before. The day he meets this girl in a restaurant, you will find he's just walking by the restaurant. He smells the perfume. He's just driving by an office right on the express. The vehicle that the girl is in drives past him. He perceives the, the fragrance. Do you know why? Because of the fragrance that you have been building in your closet, loving out on God, pouring out on God, what God begins to do, God begins to spread out that fragrance and only this person perceives that fragrance. Your smell becomes so strong that anywhere you turn, anywhere he is, he perceives that smell. Woo! <laughs> this is the life that God created us, that is the power that you have to call forth. You can summon. Now, I was going to say, Hebrews chapter 11. Can somebody help me read from verse 34? I think it's actually 34. Hebrews 11, 34. If you are there, help me read. Quenched the raging of the, the, fire. The, the, the TPT. TPT translation. Yes, TPT. Put out the power of raging fire and caused many to escape certain death by the sword. Although weak, their faith impart, imparted power to make them strong. Faith sparked courage within them and they became my, mighty warriors in battle, pulling armies from another realm into Stop. battle array. Stop. They pulled army from another realm into battle array. That is the power that you have. That is the strength that you have. That is the ordination that you have. You can actually summon your husband. This is the power. This is the scripture. This is the foundation upon which the power of summons is released. You can call forth your husband you are working by the office. Do you know that like, like um, Ruth, 
God can so lead you that you go transact business in a particular office and you drop a fragrance. And you walk into that office and by the spirit, you pull a covering from that office to cover yourself in the night. And the man has no choice. He wakes up in the morning and you find that all, all he's doing is that that calls the PA. That lady that came to transact business, do you, did you collect her number? Said that that God save her if she says no. Query. You mean somebody came to this office to transact business? You couldn't collect them? And people will be wondering, what is it about that lady? People have been coming. We've not been collecting number or details. We just transact business and it's over. He said, go now to the HR, go to the to the customer, to the chief finance officer, whoever transacted, had a direct dealing with that woman, go and get details. I need to get. Why? Because he cannot sleep until that matter is settled. Why? Because by the spirit, you were able to pull his covlet to cover yourself. Amen. So one way to call, to summon your husband is by pulling. Ruth did it physically. You can do it spiritually. Another way is going the pathway of Queen Esther by allowing the Holy Spirit in the place of fellowship to so deck you with the ornaments, to, to dress you up the way the king likes it. And to use the right fragrances to so massage you and turn you into a vessel that shines, that releases a glory shine, such that when the king set his eyes on you, that man is a king. Remember, we have been ordained. We have been made kings and priests unto our God. We reign on the earth. All of a sudden, you will be directed to that king's domain. And as soon as the king set eyes on you, it's okay. Procession ceases. No more inspections. I have seen, I have found my bride. I have found the queen. I pray that somebody, you will be located even as you enter into the territory of that young man in the name of Jesus. As you enter into that domain, your, the fragrance of love, the fragrance of life that you have generated over the years will begin to flow and enter into that domain such that the king will perceive it even from his palace and will, reach, will stretch out his scepter and reach out to you in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will re that you recognize that donkey that you need to water. You recognize the man riding on it. And even as you water that person in the spirit, all of a sudden, you will see that the thirst will begin to pull the person. The fragrance of your perfume, the fragrance, the perfume of your skin will begin to draw the person until the person locates you where you are. And your water will be waiting to water both the man and to water his, his ministry. In the name of Jesus, because what you have been doing in the spirit would be good to manifest even in the physical. Now, for those of you who think that mm, I'm giving up on marriage, good, I agree with you. But see, make sure that that love that is locked inside, don't let it waste. Don't let it dissipate. Instead, pour it out on God. And I, I assure you, as you pour it out on God, God will bring that man, that when you see the man, you will know beyond any reasonable doubt. This is he of whom the Lord showed me that I have been seen in my dreams. I have been seen, I have been, because just as he smells your perfume, you too will be smelling his own perfume. Because that perfume is not an ordinary perfume. It's a, it's a perfume of fellowship, a perfume that was generated, an essence generated in the place of fellowshipping with the Lord. I pray, I release it into the plat into uh, across all platforms now that anywhere you are, that one, the Lord, by his grace, by his power, by his love, will begin to connect you mystically, divinely to the source of living waters, so much so that your fragrance will so fill the atmosphere that that young man, that young woman, you would perceive it and there will be divine connection together in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you 
even as you begin to bask in this knowledge and walk in the fullness of this life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, I come to the end of the teaching. So I just, the platform is now open for, for, for discussions, for questions, for answers, and for contributions. God bless you. Amen. Questions? Woo! Wow. Yeah, I released it. Father, I just pray for everyone, even as this angel is here now. Lord, let the platform be open. Let the gateways be open. The gateways that brings that will lead to converse to marital conversations. I declare it open now. I declare the doorways open, the pathways open. Lord, even those who thought they were thinking, let me just forget it. Father, it's because they have reached that point where they will be, where they will not be connected. Therefore, I ask now that they will begin to connect with this angel. They will see the angel, and the angel, Abba Father, will begin to point them to the right path in the name of Jesus. Even as we are here on this platform, I ask that in the spiritual, let there be an opening. Let men begin to see. Let them perceive. Let fragrances be broken open. Let 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 their let their bodies be broken open so that their sweetness will be poured out, and their their partners, their spouses, we connect with it and we drink of this sweetness, and that would be a speedy activation of life and relationships in the name of Jesus. I release it on Facebook, I release it on YouTube, I release it on Mixel, I, I, I release it on Telegram, and I release it on Zoom. And even those who will listen to this recording here and after, Lord, let the same life, the same power, the same function generated here, let it flow into their hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Yes. The platform is open, and if there's no, if there are no questions, then we can call it a day. If you have questions, you can just raise up your hands, and we ask you to unmute. If you're on YouTube and you want to ask questions, please just type in your questions. Missel, I have the same thing, and then Facebook the same thing. Okay, Esther, go ahead. Amen. Um, I was mine is more of a comment. Um, yeah. I just want to say a very brief, maybe after that, then the question comes through. <laughs> but um, I just want to say a very big thank you. Um, even from the for this teaching, even from the last week teaching with the relationship class, that just expanded a whole lot. It's it's been an ongoing thing, even with the dances and all that, but it just solidified the direction God is taking me to true. And obviously, yes, last week being my um, birthday, it really helped because for once in my life, this birthday was very different. I, I keep telling a few people that are around me, I said this birthday was very different because it brought me into that place of clarity to know that my love and loyalty, like you said, um, that scripture said, um, uh, show yourself approved unto God and not unto anything else. But without even knowing, without being cautious of it, it has always been unto man. And because it's unto man, whenever it comes to any birthday, there is that expectation that I bring before myself and with myself. And, and the adverse, adversary being the accuser, rather the accuser being the judge, like, okay, this, 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 whatever the situation may have been. But those classes we've been taking, relationship or in the dances, brought me into that pruning and threshing ground where I get to pour out on Abba, like you're saying, I get to love up on Jesus without giving anyone's approval, whether physically, spiritually, and owning it, 
being intentional, that reckless, having an understanding what the, the meaning of reckless abandonment means and just loving it. So once this birthday came out, came up, it was, there was a whole, it, it was like a whole new person. I saw a whole new person within me. Mm. And I guess it's that looking at the mirror and owning it, like he celebrated me in me. And I was able to see it. I was able to enjoy it. I was able to participate in, in the encounters he gave. And it was very unique. It was very, very unique. And I, one thing I told myself, Lord, please let this not be a one-time thing. And ever since then, it's been the same. There's no like, oh, it was just that hype. No. It's it's my it's my status quo. It's my life. It's my life in Him. Like I can I can really understand in Him. I live, move, and have my being because I am experiencing it. And knowing this relationship, even as you as you have as you have laid it, to understand that we are living in, we are pulling from Him. Whether we are we are ready to we we've closed the door or i've closed the door and say marriage is not it i just want to love upon jesus but really understanding what it means knowing that he's not he's not too jealous to say i'll give you a man neither is he to like you can't do both if what i'm saying is is meaning uh making sense but it just makes it so um brings me into that place of conscious reality to know that he wants everything for me and i want everything in him and i'm owning it and i'm loving it and i'm just grateful so i said this to come back to thank you so much sir for opening me into that reality and possibility in god and just growing in him yes sir Amen. bless you Amen. god bless you I, I i really appreciate that and i know that even as you continue, things will begin to happen and you just begin, sometimes you just find yourself perceiving certain fragrances. Okay, before I man speaks, somebody just sent me sent a message on Telegram that when I talked about someone, that she summoned and um, a Muslim, a non-believer manifested. Now, let me say this. Maybe I, 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 should, I should give this as... A warning because what we don't know, what we don't what's, what's going to, oh my God. sorry about that. Um my this was almost powering out. Yeah, what we don't know is that what we are talking about is a very serious matter. Now, if you look at what I said, we talked about. If you look at what we started last week, then talking about the offloading of mindsets and all of that, then I talked about loving out on God, pouring out on Him. You don't summon in yourself because you have the power to do that. That's what you don't know. You have the power to do that. So the first thing you want to do is to submit yourself. That is why I say loving out on God, pouring out on Him. You submit yourself fully unto him. If you go start summoning because you have the power to summon, you will summon beast too. <laughs> Let me just tell you that. Things will, because there are, because when you, you are, you are calling out from the spirit realm, you are pulling from another realm into this realm. So what you want to do is to ensure the pathways are cleared, is to ensure that there is a purification, what I call spiritual, um, uh, what, what they call spiritual fumigation. You must, there must be a fumigation, and you must. That's why you see, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. The issues of life. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what you want to do first is ensure. That the pathway, actually in your heart, to the pure, all things are pure. Ensure that there is a clear pathway. Ensure there is a clear pathway. Because if there is no clear pathway, 
And to clear the pathway, the simplest way to doing it is to just pouring out on God and loving out on God. When you love out on God, one of the one of the evidences that you are loving out on God is that it is God that will be pursuing you with the marriage issue. As a matter of fact, by the time the Lord shows you the person, because of the way you love you are you've loved God so much, it will be difficult for you to oh God, are you won't this interfere with our relationship? That is the evidence that you are you have fully poured out on God. When you pour out on God fully, he will be the one. As a matter of fact, it will look as if marriage will be a distraction, but that is when you are actually ready. <laughs> so don't rush into just jumping on, because these things are real. You will see the answer. You will get results. But what kind of result will you get? Remember, that's why I brought out that scripture. It says, life and death lies in the power of the tongue. Many there be that eat the fruits thereof. What are you producing? So ensure that the pathway is pure, clear. Ensure that you, your heart, is fully dedicated unto God. Then he will tell you it's time to pull. And when you pull at that particular time, you will be amazed because it's ready. I hope that helps you. I don't want to mention your name. I hope that helps. Okay. Um, I think there is um there is um something from YouTube. Okay, it says how are we? Okay. So check your WhatsApp. I sent it to WhatsApp as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. I didn't say we are fasting from November. I didn't say we are fasting. It's, it's a school we are running. We are running a school of supernatural. If you want to fast, you can fast. Uh, or did I mention fasting at any time, Rhoda? Rhoda, did I mention no, fasting? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I didn't. Because we are running a school of supernatural and we are not fasting. It's a school. Um. I hope you know that um which day was it not two days ago we we're discussing that on new one platform where a university in the uk just approved um a course they just approved a course on witchcraft and uh occultism in that university and yeah we have so i, I commented on that platform I, I said, and yeah, we have Christian universities. They won't even teach anything on supernatural. There is no course on supernatural. There is no course on ascensions. There is no course on mystic, uh, on our mystic realms as believers. There is no course on, you know, even healing. Wow. Said, all of those, there is no course on them. But look at a university. They are running a course on witchcraft and occultism. That's why that's what the school of that's what the school is about in November. Now, for a normal believer, how does one love pour on God? What would this specifically entail? That is why I use, I said, the way you will love that spouse, the way you want to love that person. Before you say you want to get married, it then means you have love to give, right? Am I right? Eh? When you say I want to get married. I want to be married. It then means you have love to give. Say, now that love that you want to give, see God as your lover. God wants to be loved. God wants to be pampered. If you're a man, the way you want to pamper that lady, you have so much pampering to give. Pamper God. So you want to say, how do you pamper God? Those words, I just told you how I do mine. 
because I have words to speak. So what I do, I send those words to God. I tell God, I wake up in the morning, the first night I say, Lord, I love you, Holy Spirit, I love you. I just love you. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. There are times I say, Holy Spirit, I know you are here, but I'm missing you. You don't know how much I miss you. There are times I so love God that it's as if my heart is going to explode. There are times it frightens me. It's as if, I, it's as if death is coming. Because I, it's like there is a longing in me. I'm just longing for God. Surely in recent, in the past few days, that was so much that it's, it, it literally took over my whole being. I discovered that in my pouring out on God these days, I so pour out on God that it literally turns me on to the point of ecstatic realms. <laughs> it's, you see, you can't say you have love to give to your spouse when you get married and you can't love out on God. So why not pour out that love on God? Do you know that the reason is difficult? Some of us is when we get married, we start learning to love. Like this question you're asking me now is that you, what you are saying is when you get married now, the question you are asking me is that how do I love my wife? Or how do I love my husband? That's the question you are asking me. How do I pour out my love on my, my spouse? That's the question you're asking me. And that's why I said, the way, I said, I said, the way you want to love that spouse, love God that way. Pour it out on God. Tell God all those sweet things. God loves them. It, it is not a carnal discussion. Tell God, I love you. I need you. I long for you. My heart yearns for you. Tell God those things. When you do that, by the time you get married, it becomes easy for you to say. But if you can't tell God, it will be difficult to tell your spouse. Show me a man who can't say, I love you to, your, to his wife or to even to people around. I will show you a man who cannot tell God he loves God. Show me a woman who can't tell her husband, I love you, I love you, I love you so much to the point that sometimes tears even begin to come out. Show me a woman who can tell her husband, I need you. I will show you a woman who can't tell God, I need you. I show you a woman who can't tell God, I love you, to the point that she becomes so emotional. Yeah. Because, do I show you scripturally? He said, how do you say that you love God that you don't see when you can't love a man, the people around you that you see? So pour out on God the way you want to pour out on that man, on that woman. By the time you, as you practice it with God, when that man, when that woman appears, it won't be a struggle. Why? Because it's like um, a reflection. That person becomes um, the visible expression of the God that you've been loving. And that is why it is easy for you to provoke that person to love and to provo provoke that person to God. The prayer I always pray for spouses is that they provoke one another to love and provoke one another to God. And it, it doesn't have to start. The reason you can provoke each other to love and to God is because you have been pouring out on God. You have been loving out on God. So because you are doing that, by the time you get married, there's the same thing. The same character continues in that relationship. And that is why you can you find anytime that person sees you, the person sees God. Anytime he hears you, he hears God. And anytime you hear the person, you hear God and you see God. Because your actions is what is is just it's just a reflection. Is a physical display of what you are doing with the Lord. Anyone, show me a man who has so much love to give. I will show you a man who loves out on God. I will show you a woman who loves out on God so much. That is why they have so much. Anytime they enter the room, love feels everywhere. They interact. But people who don't know, they will start feeling threatened. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope that answers the person's question. Okay, um, okay, just one more. Okay, 
God bless you. Let me just read it and say, thank you, sir, for the clarity on the summoning, because I know there is the Latin power of the soul man. Yes, there is. That is why I keep saying, on the platform of the, 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 the way we summon is on the platform of our loving out. See, the key, just love out on God. Love is so, the, when you love out on God, it purifies your system, it purifies your heart. When you start loving out on God, there are things that you can't lie. You can't cheat. Why? Because it's God. It's God you have to deal with. He knows everything. He knows you inside out. You Even your anger, you, your, your anger disappears. There are those characters, you've been, those character flaws that people have been complaining about. And even you have been complaining about it. You have been tired of it. All of a sudden, it disappears. It dissipates. It melts. It neutralizes because you are loving out on God. That presence neutralizes all of those things. Amen. All right, Ayman, let's hear you. Okay. I wanted to ask a question. I wasn't... I, didn't, I missed some of the classes. I wasn't always available for most of the classes. But um, so I don't know if you've addressed them. No, go ahead. Even if we okay. have to address them. No problem. Then I have a comment too. Okay. Okay. What what's um okay, you, you said you said something that um okay, you talked about, you know, the way you maybe you created the I don't know how to explain it. Maybe you know that scripture you quoted. The, the the um as a man thinketh that's the way he is not, yeah mm -hmm. right and then you also said something about um creating the atmosphere around you yeah. um yes i agree but i also don't fully agree because in a society like our country nigeria i'm now speaking for women it's it doesn't really hold true and i say that for good reason you know um there's, there's a lot of society, society pressure when a woman is not married at a certain age. And it can be quite demoralizing. And I'm coming from, you know, what I see. So I'll give you an example. Um, okay, let me just use this one quickly. I've shared it before. Meghan Markle, right, is, I'm not saying she's my role model or anything. If you look at her background, she she comes from her family is white trash. I mean, she's half caste, half black, half white. The white side of her family is what Americans call white trash. Okay, she's um, they've all filed for bankruptcy. I've read that. I've read about their family extensively, except maybe her and maybe her mom. They've all filed for at one point or the other, and then. Um, she was married before and divorced, yet she married not just the most eligible bachelor in the, in, in the UK, but in the whole wide world. I'm telling you. I, you know, I joke around and I tell people that if they brought that one to, to, to me, I will make sure that that pastor here is like Baal and um, whatever. <laughs> we go to the mountain out here. So, you know, it's just a joke. I'm saying now, you see, I'm not saying that her marriage, but there's nothing that happens that God doesn't know about. She was what? She wasn't exactly, you know, like, a, as they say, spring chicken. She got married in her late 30s. And the point I'm making is, she, you know, after divorce and everything she's been through, she was able to still marry to me what I see as the most, you know, I know I'm, I'm talking of what, looking by sight, not by faith. One of the most eligible bachelors. Okay, so I just want to pack that. I just want to make that statement. Now, in a country like Nigeria, when, like I said, when a woman is not married, there's societal pressure and it's demoralizing. So when you say you create, no. I read one scripture in Chronicles. Unfortunately, I can't remember it where um, somebody was just coming back. And as he came, he, 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 um, he was encouraged by the word of someone. Someone spoke a kind word to him. And that's, that word that that person spoke made him do so, you know, he, he did a, he achieved a lot of things. And later in the Bible, it was recorded that that word that that person spoke encouraged him so much that he was able to achieve everything he did. And that is not what um, happens. Instead, it's like they want to press you and press you, you know, and make one feel like not even human anymore. So when, you know, how do you, I don't know. It, it takes a very, I don't know how to explain it. You have to be very um, 
strong in your faith to overcome some of the, you know, the the I don't, I'm looking for the right word to to use, the the atmosphere, and sadly most of these things come from the church, the you know the way they make women feel when they are not married, it comes from the church. And it's just very sad. And I've just, I've come to realize that it's not everybody, including pastors, that should be speaking to your life because not every pastor is anointed for, you know, for, let me say, maybe marriage or singles or something. Because a lot of them, I'm sorry to say, with all due respect, they just open their mouth and speak hot air. Nothing reasonable really comes out. And you hear at times when they even preach. I mean, there was one time I was in them. Um, a church and they were preaching and the example they used, they used a single girl. Basically they were saying that. So I said of all the examples, they were talking about grace of all the examples. Why did it have to be that one? Why in my mind? So I just wanted to, you know, say that. Then the other question I wanted to ask was on attraction. Now this, that's like this issue of attraction because um, sometimes you might meet somebody or you feel, okay, like now maybe, you know, you, you, someone might come along and you think they are good, but physically there's really no connection there. You've looked left, right, north, south, there's no connection, but you feel they are a good person. How, you know, I've often heard that you don't, you shouldn't um, judge by sight. But sometimes you cannot overlook, especially when, you know, the person is just not you know, physically attractive in any way to you. Okay, let me right. stop there. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Now, let me take um the, like, that, that, that scripture that you talked about in um the first or second chronicles, where that person was given a word of courage and was later recorded now if you notice even that word created an environment of courage around that person now somebody spoke you can also speak that was why you see that i started with the place of create from the place of creation now as i from the place of creation how god created us in our image after his likeness that is where we should always take our foundation from that is the genesis of our that is the authenticity of our genesis, is the authenticity of our identity. Our identity is him. He is our standard, not Nigeria, not the world. Now, what men say to you and how society sees you should not be something. I know if you will say that you live in the society, maybe that is the problem. Maybe you are conscious of the fact that you are living in the society where they don't have respect for you. So why not change it? How do you change it? Is the question that may come. How you change it is to start living where your where your spirit is. To start living where your where your your lover is. Jesus is your lover. Now, if you understand that he's your lover, you have a secret stream. You have a secret fountain where both of you meet. Now, if you meet him there constantly. I tell you, the fragrance from that place will start, you know, I talk, I use the word spiritual fumigation. You will be amazed. Um, like, I don't, you didn't join, I don't know whether you've listened to the message on offloading mindsets. If you've not, I will encourage you to go and listen to it. And I shared some things there where I was talking about how the environment I was in so discouraging, so that it was accusation, accusation, accusation. But when I began to pray, the Lord did not show me them. Instead, he was showing me, he said, study to stop trying to convince men. Stop trying to prove to men. I am the one. I am your approver. So that was a mind shift for me. It changed my mind. It carried me from where I was. It catapulted me into a realm. So I began to dwell in that realm. As I began to dwell in that realm, I discovered that these people, I'm not saying this in a um, derogatory way. I discovered that, let me, I think, okay, let me put it better. The spirit that was being projected towards me, I was, I, I was seated in a place that was higher than them. 
Why? I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, far, far above powers and principalities. Listen, I'm not described by the societal um, talks. Jesus said that we are, you are in the world, but you are, he said they are in the world. That is, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. What it means is that I must have the mindset of my dwelling place. If I have the mindset of my dwelling place, I'll be transforming this, this, this arena in that my little space. And guess what? The fragrance, that is why I talked about you pouring out on God, loving out on God. When you do that, you are creating an essence. That essence is released into, just like you enter into a room, the room is smelly. There's a foul smell in the room. What do you do? You neutralize that foul smell by putting perfume. Do you now say that because that room is smelly, so every other room is described by that room? No. You are the one that will decide how that... It started with a in a smelly way, but you will decide how it ends. By doing what? By creating an atmosphere that releases a sweet fragrance to neutralize that foul smell. So if we keep saying that the society in Nigeria is the way it is, is the way it is, we will never change it. That is why I say we created, and I want you to know, I still insist that it is by the power of our own words that we created the Nigeria that we are living in. It is by the power of our words that we created a society that is now very brutal against us. We have the power also, just the way we created it, we also have the power to reverse it. Now, to talk about the present system called church, I will not, that is why I said the teaching that we are doing here, that's why this is a master class, to shift us from that place. They have made that error. We can't continue dwelling in that error. We finished a meeting before this particular meeting, talking about um, 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 Nigeria, the, 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 the what of nations, the joy of the nations or something like that. Now, the, the, on that platform, we've been praying for a while now. I just joined them of recent, but they've been on for about two, three years. What they are doing is praying for a new systemic ecclesia. They use the word church, new church order. But for me, I know that it's actually that who Jesus came to build is what they are pressing towards. So it's just this weekend, starting from yesterday, yeah, two days ago, yesterday, where, okay, Yesterday night, okay, yeah, I don't even know how to put it now. It started from Friday because we're already in on Sunday now. It started from Friday. Yeah, Nigeria, the glory of the nation. Now, it we started that to make it public, but it's been a closed group. This is the first time we're having a public platform to start changing the mindset, to bring us, to bring the system back to what it was originally. In this same society, people like Babalonda were in this society and they, they, they tried. They will say nobody goes to a particular forest. Babalola will go there, not even with anything. He will go there. It was in this same kind of society that people like, um, um, what was his name, um, Pa Elton, lived such a life that he was able to download the school of Nigeria in years to come. So how come... We, with our own mouth, all we see, we are tearing it down, tearing it down. Have you not heard? Listen to this. He said, a wise woman builds her own home, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. That is what we've been doing. We've been acting like the foolish women who have been tearing down this nation with our own hands. It's time we begin to build like wise master builders. So what I'm bringing out is this. Don't, if you believe that the society is so mean to um, people at a certain age that are not married, and you keep having that mindset, what it means is that you are, not, you, you are accepting the situation, you are not changing the situation. You know, when I first, when I first started going, meeting people, intercessory groups and all of that, all I keep hearing, the prayer point was that they want to Islamize Nigeria. They want to Islamize Nigeria. They want to Islamize Nigeria. I say, ah, 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 ah. If they want to Islamize Nigeria, maybe that is why God is honoring them. Because at least they are doing something to Islamize them. You, what are you doing to Christianize Nigeria? What are you doing? Meanwhile, look at what is happening in Iran right now. 
Yesterday, yesterday alone, 150 mosques were shut down in Iran. So I now sent a mes message. When, they, when I heard it, I now sent a message to find out, say, come, what's going on? I heard that. They said, ah, that yes, a hundred, that, that was just yesterday alone, 150, I mean, that was Thursday alone, 150 mosques were shut down. He said, but sir, 60% of the mosques in Iran have now been shut down. 60%, that is 50,000 mosques. 50,000 mosques have been shut down in Iran. They used to have 75,000. Now 50,000 have been shut down, remaining 25,000. But you won't see any church building. Now the people are complaining that they don't know people are no longer, that people are, people are angry at the way they are using Islam to fight and run the government. All right? Now, what is changing it? The mindset of the poor is shifting into glory range. You see? But we, that we have the power, we are complaining. By those complaints, we are creating atmospheres for that, that which we are complaining about. We are creating the atmosphere for it to thrive. So why not we see what God sees? That was where I started from. See what God sees. So that when you see what he sees, then you can speak what he's seeing to change what he has not said. Jesus said, whatsoever I see my father do, that is what I'm doing. So what are you seeing the father do so that you will do that? That is why I said the foundation. That's why I spent so much time there. The foundation is that mindset. When you shift your mindset, number one, then you pour out on God, love out on God. When you start loving God, you pour out on him. My God. You will see how things will begin to turn around. And you see, that particular thing about how people, how do you, that's why I, drug, how do you see yourself? Stop listening to what people are saying. Listen to what God is saying about you. What is God saying about you? And what do you believe about yourself? What you believe about yourself, you will use that to shut, to neutralize whatever people are saying about you. That's what, I think you should listen to that particular teaching on Wednesday of Floating Mindset. It will give you a clear foundation of what we have. But I've just expanded on that also, even now. God bless you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Just to quickly add one thing. Well, yeah. personally, I am, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to put it. I don't put myself down. And even like, okay, I never put myself down in any situation, whether for anything, work or whatever. But I hear people around me make comments like, you know, I hear some girls say, um, you know, no longer is spring chicken. And I'm like, okay, if you know be spring chicken, now you know that's your own yeah, that, that's That's where you now begin to encourage them. That's where you now begin to teach them because right. they really don't know their identity. If they know their identity, they wouldn't be saying those things about themselves. No, I, I, I do. And I, I tell them and I say that this is the same God that brought water out of the rock. He can do anything. So, you know, exactly. if you want to have that, I personally, you know, but I'm just saying, you know, it's just, it's 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 something I have observed. And, you know, in my mind, I just look, said this thing is a, is a system. It's not just, it's in the church. It's in the workplace. It's everywhere. So you, you need to, if someone is not strong in Christ, right? They really, I mean, it's, 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 there's a tendency to be demoralized perpetually. So, and I think it's because of this kind of culture and mindset that they call Africa a dark continent. Because abroad, big deal whether a woman is married. We are, we are not a dark or... continent. That is what I'm not they... saying we are, but I no, said no, no, is this. No, I'm not, what I'm saying is whatever they call, that's what they want us to be. But we refused it. We refuse it. Because mm -hmm. we are the one now that is going to give them light that they don't know. True, true. <laughs> but okay. Well, okay, let me use the word perception. So um, exactly. then I, you keep talking about pouring out, and I know you talked about the scripture in Second Samuel chapter 23, but can you elaborate more on what you mean by, you know, pouring, pouring out? I also think of when you talk of pouring out, I also remember when Abraham wanted to sacrifice his son. You know, I think sometimes if you, if you are in a relationship or you meet someone you like, you should put it on the altar. And uh, maybe wait for God's 
I don't know, to do something there. Okay, pouring so, out on God, pouring out on God is this. It's just like, permit me to do this now, right? Like, I say, let's say I wasn't married, right? And um, I see, and um, I'm, I was trust, no, I'm going to use very specific words. Let's say I was trusting God for a spouse and I have trusted, I have prayed, I have done all the things that I have, I have read in books, I have gone for seminars and I put those things into prayer, but I've not found any, all right? So I now get to a point where I say, Lord, I'm not doing it again. Let's leave it. You know what, Lord? I know I have so much to give. I have love to give. I have this to give. I have that to give. Lord, you know what? I have seen that I've not found anybody worthy of what um what I want to bring to the table. So, Lord, I want to lay everything, all my cards. I want to lay them on the table for you and you alone. So I want to love you. So, like I said, so I start loving God. That's pouring out on God. The things I would have loved to say to that woman, I will say it to God. The letters I would have loved to write to that woman, I will write them to God. The words, like sometimes, oh Lord, I just feel, why do I feel this way? Lord, I'm feeling so ugly. Father, I just want, I need a hug. Lord, I want to hug you. I hold you. Oh, Father, I miss you so much. I, I, I just love you. I begin to say those words. Now, as I'm saying those words unto God, by the time the person comes, those things I was saying to God become so easy to say to that person. Why? Because when I love, when I love the person, I'm actually loving God in the person. So my loving God is now what is translating into my loving that person. And my loving the person is also translating into my loving God. They begin to walk hand in hand. They walk pari pasu. But if you notice, there are people who have gone through so much in life. I have counseled people who are like that. When they get married, they just believe they should sit back and just be loved, but they don't want to give anything. That is such people. When I meet such people, the first question I ask, I say, do you tell God you love God? Their, their answer is outright no. Because I, I, would, I would tell them, I would have been surprised if you do. Because you can't tell me you love God when the person that, take for example for the women, when the person that is your covering, which is like God unto you, you can't tell the person you love him. You can't convince me that you love God. But that's the person closest to you and closest to God that you should love. That's the person that reflects God. The guys too, when I tell them, I discover that anybody that cannot say to their spouses, I love you. Look, they cannot. Anybody that cannot say to their spouses, I'm sorry. They cannot say to God, they, are, they find it difficult to repent of their sins. So the secret to even breaking into relationship is just love God. That way that you want to be loved and the way you want to, you want to love, pour it out on God and experience God's love firsthand. It will change your mindset about everything. Some of us have not experienced God's love first, firsthand because we, we have really not opened up ourselves for God to love us. Why? Because we hold back. Because of either experiences, upbringing, and all of that, we hold back. We, we think that telling God, I love you, <laughs> imagine telling, oh God, I love you so much. I miss you. I, oh, I just want to kiss you and all of that. Have you told God, Lord, I, want, I pour out my kisses on you. Kiss me with the kisses of your lips. Have we, have we gone to the book of, of, of uh, the Song of Songs to read out those scriptures, personalize it, and see you actually relating with God, walking hand in hand, holding and rolling on the bed with God like that. That's how. That's what it means to pour out on God. When you practice that with God, I, look, 
It's God that will be telling you, okay, okay, okay. See this thing that you are pouring, you have so much to give now. I want, it's time to pour it out on my son, on a son that I'm bringing to you. Amen. That's what it means to pour out on God. Hallelujah. Esther, I saw your hand up. Thank you. God bless you. Esther, I saw your hand up. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm laughing at the last statement you made. And yeah. I'm saying, hold on, Lord, oh, it's not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you become so protective, of, not protective, but you become so protective of that time. You're like, ah, I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> Let's keep it. <laughs> Let's give it on the download. Nobody has to know. Uh, but I was going to, I was, you, you said it. God bless the sister for her honesty and asking the question she asked. Because when I heard it, I was like, I love, she said she hadn't listened to some of the messages, which was perfectly understandable. So God bless you, sis. And I think what I was going to add to that was that even with this um, uh, Hamas and Israel war, I was talking to my brother and we're going, he was telling me the his research, his knowing and all that and that. And even when it happened, I know I reached out to you. It was due to the to that effect and what was seen and all that. It was so emotional. But I had to like totally take myself out. And I had to ascend into a place like, okay, Abba, what is the late, what is the news in heaven? Because I know this. It's not, it's not news to you. This maybe was, was like maybe 20 years ago <laughs> that it came through the decks of heaven. So we are next year going, losing our minds over this, but still being present. That's why I, I believe the scripture say we are, we are, um, we are in this world, but not of this world. And after that, I found peace. I found rest. I knew how to go about it. And I knew where, even in prayer, in intercession, and how to handle it. So while talking to my brother and he was saying it, then I started giving him the testimony of what God is doing in Iraq, Iran. And the from, from, your, um, from the testimony you have shared with us. And he was like, wow. I said, yes, things are happening there. The move of God is taking place. But I said, if you are looking at it from what is going on on earth, we as the children of God that should know better or should find out God, okay, what exactly, we would be contradicting to what God is saying. And like that testimony you gave to us that the Islamic person said, I use it a lot. And I'm like, I'm going to tell Pastor Clem to give us that testimony that he said, if he had known this is what we are keeping away, we, we as children because sons are more matured but if we had we had he had no if they had known that this is what they have they we are keeping away from them that piece they would have gotten us much more than that and it really blows my mind because when i dwell on that i'm like lord please let me not withhold what what is you have poured into us in abundance let me not withhold that and with that i was holding this for this class of supernatural but I will share this as an encouragement also. Um, I had a, um, an experience God took me to, and I saw, um, I was trying to park somewhere. It wasn't here in the US, but there was a place it took me to. And I was trying to park, uh, I was driving a, a car and I was trying to park. I saw a good place and I didn't feel okay about parking there. And I went to a place and it was in front of a house a um, bungalow house and by then there were these thugs that came out of the house they had guns they were all you know they had their equipment and ready for war ready to do things and one of them the moment he saw me came and I came down from the car very calm and very cool headed I came down and he was just talking and I was, he was like he's about to fire my my enemy he was about and I looked at him I was like look you stop talking I said, the gun you are holding won't do anything. Don't worry about it. I said, what I want is, I want you. I want you. God wants you. I want to give you to God. <laughs> and the person was not getting, the man was talking. <laughs> he was getting irritated, but he couldn't. So he was telling me, he said, don't you know why I am? So while he was talking, I just collected guns, like collecting cookies from a child's hand. And I was pointing it to the floor. Like I was disarming it. I was just shooting to him. And it was a big gun. It was a gun that had a big opening. So it's like a bazooka. That if you fire, you should know. So I wasn't even impressed. I just did on the floor. So the guy was like in shock, but he was still trying to toughen up. 
So he still kept talking. So I lifted my head, looked at the man, and I was like, okay, you're not stop talking. I said, you know what? So he told, the, he collected somebody else gone, still trying to point at me. I said, you know what? I don't even want you again. I said, I don't just want you. I want everybody in your gang. I said, I want all of you. God, want, I'm going to give you to God. <laughs> so he was, I, I, but the more I talked, he saw that I wasn't impressed. And while that was going on, he got tired. And everybody now came. He's like, the more I talk, they were becoming spare bound. So now I just said, you know what? I'm ready. All right, all of you follow me. So I said, I'm taking you to my church. I'm taking you to my kind. Come, let me go. Let's, let me go and give you. So you will see where is real power. That's how they started following me down the street. And I came out of that experience. This was actually on my birthday. So I'm saying this to say that we are, we are supernatural beings and says that what God is beginning to do in us, it comes out of our mouth. And I thank God you said it, that you, you don't have that mindset as they do. But we need to, we, well, one thing I've noticed for me is be emboldened to say it. It's happening. We may not see it physically, but even if physically is manifesting. So how much more in the spirit? So that, that's what I wanted to share. Thank you, sir. God bless you. All right. So any other um. Rhoda, do we have any other thing from any other from YouTube? Let me just check. Okay. All right. We don't. Let me let me see. Mix that R. Okay. Nothing on Facebook. Nothing on Facebook. Okay. So we come to the end of. Singles Masterclass 2.0. I hope we are blessed. So what we just need to do now is to just, for just a brief moment, just commit, let us commit ourselves unto God and just ask that the Lord will help us in, you know, at different stages of our lives and relationships to just connect with this, to be able to operate in this realm that is higher than the secular, than the conventional things that we have known, that the Lord will continue to advance us in the spirit. I want us to unmute our mic and just speak. Let's wash ourselves. Let's bask in this knowledge, in this understanding. Just, just unmute ourselves for just a great moment. And just speak and just ask that Lord, let this word wash over me. Let this word wash over me. Let, this over me. let it be us. Let it be my the couple. Let it be my spirit, my soul, and my spirit. And let it be my soul. 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 Let be to water in the spirit. That's something that we need to dwell on. To be able to water for the ladies. To be able to water my spouse in the spirit. Water his person. Water his destiny. Water his ministry. Even in the realms of the spirit. To be able to pull his pocket to cover myself so that he has no choice. He should not rest until he has done something concerning that pocket because he knows the implication. That he will perceive, that we perceive his Fragrance, a, you will oh, perceive my fragrance. This is God. For the man that you will be able to create that person, soon as you go out from God, you will learn from Him. You will enter into that class. You will mature in that class. You will manifest life in that class. And you will produce life from that class in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. We bless you, God. We honor you, King of Glory. And I want you to begin to speak that my age, my age is not the number. My age is what I think, how I think of myself in the spirit. I now I am the one who determines who decides how old I am. It is not the number that determines how old I am. It is not the society that determines how old I am. I am the one who says how old I am. Thank you, God. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, King of Glory. Blessed are you, God. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you.
And God thank bless you, sir. Shine upon you. Thank so, you, sir. As you step out, you step out in this glory. You step Amen. out in this power. You step out honoring the Lord in your body, in your thoughts, in your mind, in Amen. everything until Amen. you become Amen. the fullness Amen. of all that he wants you to be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You will glorify him and you, he will be glorified Amen. in your life. He will also glorify you in the name Amen. of Jesus. There's a Amen. glory you had with him even before you were from your mother's womb. He will Amen. glorify you with that glory. Amen. And men will see. Amen. The world will see. And they will Amen. glorify the name of the Lord in Jesus. Amen. 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 Bless you. Have a wonderful day. Keep on shining. Keep on radiating. And from Amen. next year, we'll start the for those except the except you don't have marriage in your school. I decree it now. Amen. Listen to this. Except you don't have marriage in your school, I decree it now that the doors of marriage are open. I see, as, I, as I'm saying this, I see the angel of the the love angel standing beside everybody and stare in the hearts of people even now. For some of you, you'll be feeling a little burning sensation, like your heart is being set on fire, even as I'm speaking now. That's because there is a massaging, there is a, a, a supernatural infusion of love into your heart right now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. We wait for you. I, I, I'm expectant. I'm awaiting the testimonies. And for the married people who came, please carry the <laughs> message and go and share with the singles. I know I want to believe. 